always a pleasure to have South Carolina's associate head football coach and special teams coordinator Pete Limbo on the program. The last time we had you on, sir, you were in an airport uh, just days after the upset win at Clemson. Uh, how different do things feel for you guys on the staff uh, after you've kind of gone through the recruiting thing, uh, you know, this year and you're, you're getting ready for spring ball. There, there, there's a new vibe, it feels like, uh, around the program. Well, there certainly is. And uh, thanks for having me on, by the way, as usual. I, I appreciate it. Don't take it for granted. Um, there's been a lot of continuity, which is a good thing. Uh, but there's also a lot of change. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's part of college football in this day and age. And you have to adjust. You have to adapt. Um, and, and you have to uh, ready yourself for those things, whether you're a coach, player, fan. Uh, but it's, it's been really good. It's been really good. I, I thoroughly enjoy the guys I get to work with every day. Uh, this new group of players that have come in really seem like they want to be here. They want to be Gamecocks. They're they're taking pride in uh, in wearing that gear with that block C on it. And uh, when you have guys like that to uh, to be around every day, it makes coming to the building a, a real joy. You know, you mentioned continuity, and I, I you're you're part of that. You did have, I'm sure, some opportunities, Pete. I mean, when you're as successful as you've been within this program, that's going to happen. That's the nature of your business. Uh, you're, you're hanging around here, obviously, and we've known that since before the bowl game. But what, what's, that, what's that like for you right now? It, when, you know, nice to be, I don't want to say wanted. I, I don't know how you want to portray that. But, but you are part of that continuity. And Shane also knows that guys like you are, are going to be wanted by others. Well, I'm grateful for that, and uh, I certainly don't take uh, working here for granted. Uh, it's gone extremely well, as, as well as I could have ever expected, as well as my family could have ever expected. And um, the way we've been embraced here and appreciated here is, uh, is, is fabulous. But that being said, um, I'm not wired to ever put it on cruise control. And uh, I'm as long as I'm going to coach, it's, it's going to be with my foot firmly on the gas. And um, so we're always pushing and, and looking for creative ways to get better. Um, and, and that's just my mindset and, and the way I'm driven uh, every day when I, when I come in this building. Uh, and, it, and that goes for recruiting as well. Um, I've enjoyed recruiting here and, and recruiting in the SEC and, and uh, came in with a little chip on my shoulder because maybe the expectations weren't uh, as high in that area and um, been excited to get some guys on the radar, whether we get them or not, or, or whether we decide they're the right guys for us or not, um, you know, being a part of the staff and, and uh, how we team recruit here starting with, with how hard Coach Beamer works right on down through the, the GAs and the analysts and the support staff. Um, you know, that's a big part of what we do, and, and I want to try to chip in as best as I can there as well. Uh, speaking of what you do, you have hired as an, uh, as an analyst uh, on, I guess, I say your side of the ball, but at least a special teams analyst in Tyler Zielinski. Um Tell us more about Tyler, what role you expect him to play, and, and why he's the right fit for what you guys are looking to do. Sure. Well, first, to rewind, you know, Stanton Weber did a really nice job for us for two years. And uh, uh, anytime you have a young coach uh, that gets an opportunity to move on to a full-time position, that's a great reflection on the program, on the head coach, uh, on everybody involved. Um this is a challenging profession, and, and uh, good jobs are hard to come by. There are more opportunities at the grad assistant and analyst level than there ever been, but to get one of those 10 on-the-field jobs at an FBS program is, is hard to do. So um, I'm, I'm happy for Stanton, and fortunately, uh, Tyler is a guy that uh, he and I have a history together. So he was actually my uh, quality control coach 
my last year at Memphis, did a really nice job, uh, moved on to the University of Pittsburgh where he was uh, a grad assistant working with special teams there and then got a chance to go to Texas State this past year and run the special teams himself uh, in the Sun Belt, which was also a great experience for him. So fortunately, he was able and available to come back uh, when the job opened. Uh, and it's, it's a great balance because there's familiarity with me and how I roll in our system and, and our terminology. Um, so he can really come in and hit the ground running. But the fact that he's been two other places since we worked together, um, I can tell already, uh, and even through the interview process, that, that he's got some, some good ideas to bring to the table uh, which I'm always looking for. And, and so it's a great balance of a guy who speaks our language, knows the expectations, uh, he knows my quirks, which there are many, and, um, and then at the same time, he's going to have a couple uh, little subtle things that he can bring to the table, new drills and, and whatnot, that uh, you know, we're always looking for those little creative ways to get better. Talking to Pete Limbo, Gamecock Associate Head Coach, Special Teams Coordinator, spring ball starting up in a couple of weeks. And before you know it, we'll be past the spring game and summertime will, will be here. Uh, as you know, Pete, I'm a big soccer fan. And, uh, you know, set pieces, I suppose, in soccer might be most equivalent to special teams in football. And the other day, my favorite team, Arsenal, scored a goal on a, on a corner kick. And you could tell it was very well rehearsed in practice in terms of what they wanted to do. I say that to you to ask, what does it feel like when you, because you're not going to hit those all the time, obviously, but when you guys do dial one up and you've obviously got to go through it a lot in practice to get the timing right, because those guys aren't out there as often as a regular offense. Take me through the, the feeling, uh, the reward that that gives all of you coaches, players, fans, when that hits. Well, it just continues to build uh, that foundation and that confidence that this is what we do, this is how we do it. And, uh, you know, I don't mean to, to minimize the impact of those things, but, but you, you design those things to work. <laughs> so right. so you, 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 uh, I, 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 I have um, sort of a, a, an eliminate emotion um, mindset during games that, okay, this is what it was supposed to do. We were supposed to complete that pass or we were supposed to uh, make that gadget work. And, um, and now let's move on to the next thing and let's celebrate after let's look back afterwards and smell the roses, which I need to do a better job of. And I know I've admitted that to you before, <laughs> but uh, just to give you an example in, in our off season research and study, uh, there were 14, muddle huddle snaps in the entire FBS. So that's over 130 programs playing a minimum of 12 games last year. Uh, And there were 14 muddle huddle snaps and seven of those snaps came from the Gamecocks. So, and not every one of those was successful, but, but when you go back and you look at it, uh, there's no question that we're taking an aggressive mindset uh, to what we're doing on special teams. And it's, it's certainly made an impact uh, on the outcome of games. It's made an impact on the morale of our team. It's, it's helped us build a brand. Um, there's, there's a certain, uh, for me, um, um, humility about it. But, but I know for our players, there's, there's a little confidence and a little swag about what we've been able to do, and it's been exciting. I've asked you some form of this before, and you mentioned kind of build the brand. Um, you know, there may be some football players across the country through the generations, Pete, like, oh, man, I don't want to be on the kick team. I don't want to be on the punt team. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a linebacker. I'm a, I'm a wide receiver. I don't know. Let, 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 the, let the scrubs go do that. But it is a huge part of, of what Shane wants to do, and, and that's why – you know, he selected you specifically, and, and, and as we already mentioned, why you are, are still here in Columbia. When you're out on the trail or when guys are coming in, whether you've recruited them or not, how, are, are, they, are they itching to, to, to say, Coach, put me, put me on that play, put me on that team. I want to be a part of that. Some definitely are, and some are in positions in their high school programs where 
uh, maybe their value is so great that their their high school coach is um, cautious maybe about having them do some of those roles. When we watch high school film and we see a guy blocking punts or or covering kicks, that certainly uh, adds value and and uh, gets people excited um, on both sides of the ball because it it speaks to uh, the mindset and the character of that young man. Um, and and we're very upfront with them. You know, this time of year we're we're doing some uh, virtual meetings via Zoom and. And inevitably, special teams comes up unless maybe it's an offensive lineman or somebody like that. And um, we talk about it with them. We talk about how it's a big part of our culture here. And and you can tell as you get to know these young men what their mindset is going to be. Um, and, and the guys that are team-oriented are usually the exact same guys that really want to be a part of the special teams. And what these new players are ro- learning right now this winter – uh, is that I'm teaching them fundamentals and we're not out there, um, you know, going into specifics of the punt team or kickoff return. We're teaching them the basics of football and emphasizing that that's going to translate to what they're doing on offense and defense just as well as it's going to help us on special teams. Speaking of fundamentals, before I let you go, we always talk something uh, away from football, and you've been on with us many times uh, in your in your tenure in Columbia. We know that you're, again, you and I have joked, uh, both being born in the same year, and we, we go around just throwing out what seems like just random movie quotes to make a point, and people in the generation below us, you know, look at us like, what the hell's wrong with you, but... Uh, from a from a fundamentals standpoint, from film, what's what's a movie that you almost uh, mandate that that your players watch to get a better understanding of either you or just something in in life? Is there one that they haven't seen that you had you say, well, you need to go see it? Here's a here's an under the radar movie that I think is a great one. Uh, and it's it's called Heat, and it was yeah. it came out in the mid '90s with Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Val Kilmer was in it. Uh, Tom Sizemore was in it. Uh, Ashley Judd. It was a really really good cast, and um, it's it's certainly a cops and robbers, good guys, bad guys kind of movie, but it's exceptionally well done and. And there's a lot of backstories that all seem to uh, eventually weave together um, as the movie, you know, hits its climax and so forth. And um, I think there's a lot of good leadership lessons in it, um, some group dynamics and, and some decision making and and different things. So it's more to me than just a, a cops and robbers movie. Um, it's, it's pretty intense and. Um, and it's it's really well done, and uh, and there's some some good stuff to to draw from it for sure. Good stuff as always. I could keep going, but I'll let you get back to work. You guys got stuff to do. We'll uh, we'll bug you again certainly uh, at some point during spring ball, man. But uh, congrats on the extension uh, and, and what you guys are doing here. Uh, obviously, on a big season, have fun in spring. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Great to be here in Columbia. Yes, sir. That's Pete Limbo, Gamecocks associate head coach, special teams coordinator. Always fun to talk to.